In this video I want to show the build process of the CNC conversion of my Optimum MB4 mill. In this first video we are looking at the mechanical conversion of the ball screws with uh, all the adapters. So this is a design for the two adapter pieces. Start off with cutting of some stock. Then I machined the parts on a X2 mini mill that I already had was also a self-made conversion using some stepper motors. It's a nice little mill but uh, for serious work it's just too small and not very rigid. So that's why I now bought the uh, Optimum MB4 which is a very nice chunky machine, mechanically very solid and uh, has a lot of space for the uh, ball screws and for CNC. These are the two finished parts after machining. They turned out really nicely. Unfortunately, as you will see in a moment, they won't stay like this. The ball screws I got from AliExpress, they're double ball nuts. Um, I had to remove the, the ball nut and flip it around to also be able to get it into the, the base. For that you have to make a little adapter sleeve. Uh, you can't just pull off the ball screw by itself. Uh, the balls would fall out, so you have to turn a little sleeve uh, to slide it onto. Now you can see uh, it wouldn't have fit, so you have to assemble it in place inside the machine. Now I noticed a problem that I didn't notice when I did the CAD design for the conversion, is that the ball nut flanges are too wide to fit into the casting, because there's some ribs in there that uh, are a bit bigger than I thought they were. So now unfortunately I have to grind them to size. Fortunately they are just um, some fairly low cost Chinese ball screws so I didn't feel too bad about grinding on those. Probably wouldn't want to do that on some precision uh, equipment for lots of money. So now that's after the grinding so I just had to take a little bit off the flange. I took things slowly and always cooled it down with a little bit of, of water to make sure the whole bearing doesn't get too hot. I also had to grind down the adapter sleeve a little bit so that all the beautiful machining was a little bit uh, ground down but uh, it still looks okay. So now after the grinding you can see that it uh, fits quite nicely through the through the gap here. Now I also had to do some grinding on the x-axis screw as I didn't want to take the ball nut off in this case I just wrapped it in plastic to keep the grinding dust away from the ball screw and then after the grinding I cleaned it very carefully to make sure that I didn't get any dust into the bearings. That's just a test to see if it fits now. So I had to take off quite a bit of material on the top and bottom. Uh, these are 25 millimeter ball screws which uh, fit quite nicely because the machine originally also has 25 millimeter trapezoidal screws but the ball nuts are a lot bigger than the, the blocks that it came with. So that's why this is all a little bit tight. But I did manage to fit it in in the end with a little bit of grinding. I tried my best to not have to modify the machine itself, so I made sure that my parts fit. I did have to make one small modification just to clean up this edge here to have a good seat for the ball screw. But this is a very minor modification and you can of course still put the machine together the way it was after this. This is probably about the biggest piece that you can reasonably machine on the X2. Um, it just fits. Alright, so another test fit. apologize for the camera work, I just filmed this with one hand on my phone. Um, this was actually filmed a, quite a while ago, you might already have seen the finished machine in some of my videos. I finally got around to put together a video of the build process. So 
So that fits very well now. Um, what's left to do is to install the, the bearings. I was still able to use the original bearing blocks of the machine. The only thing I had to do is uh, mill a few slots into the holes because they're not exactly on the same height as the original screw. Um, so I had to adjust a little bit. So here you can see the slots that I milled which allows me to drop the whole bearing block by a few millimeters just to make uh, the alignment of the all screw properly. To align the screw I only tightened the blocks very slightly and then moved the bed back and forth to make sure everything is in line. And then once it's all straightened out, you can tighten the, the screws all the way and it should be okay. And you notice it fairly quickly. If it's out of alignment, you start noticing a lot of friction in these screws. Now installing the thrust bearing on the other side. So this is the side where the motor will go. You can see that the ball screws were already uh, pre-machined, uh, usually with these uh, Chinese sellers you can send them a drawing how you want it and they will uh, machine the ends for you for a very small fee of a few ten dollars or twenty dollars. I later actually turned a nicer spacer than this ugly washer. And this was just for a first test. So this turns very, very smoothly now. It would actually also be a very nice conversion for uh, this machine as a manual machine because it's such a nice uh, feeling to use uh, the ball screws. It's such a smooth mov movement. So this was all for part one. In part two, I will show you how to install the Z-axis uh, bearing mount.